The Bengals sprang to a big lead last Sunday, thanks in part to the cat-like cruising of number 19 Essex Johnson. And when Essex wasn't on the prowl, his 240-pound running mate Booby Clark was busy gouging out 72 yards in the game's first score. Obviously, Cincinnati quarterback Ken Anderson had his eyes on a 17-0 advantage. And despite a warning by Jet cornerback number 20 Dallas Howell that wide receiver Isaac Curtis was leaving his zone, Anderson was not to be denied. The result was a seam-splitting six-pointer for the San Diego State product Isaac Curtis, who in his first year is one of the AFC's top five receivers. But on the next series, Al Woodall, hitting six for seven, piloted the Jets 77 yards for the six-pointer to Jerome Barkham. At the start of the second half, Woodall was blazing away again. This time, it was a volley to tight end Rich Castor, 37 yards downrange. Two plays later, the Bengals had themselves a contest as Woodall dropped back and locked in on Castor again, who, with some fast shuffling, was awarded the score. But as the game wore on, despite his 20 completions for 212 yards, Woodall began to wilt under the mauling bingo rush. And the stage was set for the triumphant return of Joe Namath, absent since his injury last September 23rd. With a little under two minutes remaining in the score, Jets 14, Bengals 20, Joe started to do his thing. Eddie Bell was the receiver, and suddenly the Jets and Joe Willie were making believers once again. But as close as it was, last Sunday fell well short of the second coming, as first Rich Castor was ruled out on a judgment call. The squabble was just beginning, however, as two plays later, it was a Castor controversy once again. A repeat shows just how close a call can get. Was Castor over the goal when he made the reception or not? So much for controversy. When in doubt, there's always one place you can look for sure. 